Welcome one to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Heroes of the Lance, brought to us by Pony Canyon and US Gold. Heroes of the Lance is based on the first Dragonlance campaign module, Dragons of Despair, and the first Dragonlance novel, Dragons of the Autumn Twilight. In Heroes of the Lance, we play as our eight main heroes through the ruined city of Zaxaroth, fighting our way to an ancient dragon and retrieving a relic known as the Discs of Mishakal. First and foremost, though, I must warn you that I've never actually read the Dragonlance novels, so unfortunately I'm not too familiar with the actual story, so if I mess anything up, I do apologize ahead of time. So here we go with Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, Heroes of the Lance. At the start of the game, you can actually load or start a new game, and once you pick a new game, it actually goes through all the characters you get to play as in the game. Throughout the run of the game, though, I will actually only be using two characters. The first character, Gold Moon, and I will also be using the best fighter in the game, Karamon. As soon as you begin the game, you immediately need to switch out the character of Gold Moon and switch it with a better character. In this case, I'm going to be switching her out with Karamon. All the characters fight a little bit differently and have different stats. Overall though, Karamon is probably the best to play as throughout most of the game because he has the best attack as well as the most defense and health. The fighting in the game is pretty advanced for the NES, and because of that, it ends up being very difficult to get down. Just being able to attack down at enemies sometimes can be extremely annoying. Even though this is based on an RPG of Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, you won't be gaining any experience for actually defeating enemies or leveling up. My goal throughout the run is to get through the game with taking the least amount of damage as I can and having all eight characters alive by the time I complete it. There are random items sometimes scattered amongst the ground, such as diamonds or gold. However, you're not going to actually need to pick up any of those items. When we walk over here and take the slide down, we get to another area of the dungeon. Here we run into a troll enemy for the first time. Getting used to the attack timing can get very frustrating early on. Trying to exactly hit the button at the right moment so that you can immediately get your sword back out so that you can keep attacking the enemy without them being able to get you stuck in a loop of attacking you nonstop. If that does happen though, try to back away and get far away from the enemy or go through them and get past them that way. When you get low on health at any point, go to your Clerical Staff spells and use the Cure Critical Wound spell to replenish the health on your characters. You may notice that your other characters in your front line will also slowly lose health depending upon what enemies you're fighting. To take an item, you actually have to go into your menu and select Take, and select the character who wants to take it so that you can actually pick up the item. We have to pick up the Gold Chalice in order to get through the game. Getting through the game without a map is almost impossible, so you really need to actually know what you're doing in order to get through or you're going to get lost very easily. Picking the right path sometimes can also be troublesome, especially when you have two paths at the same spot. Here we have a dragon for the first time, the hardest enemy in the game by far. These enemies can deal a lot of damage to you very quickly. The best strategy for them, though, is even though you may get hit by their fire a little bit, in which case you may need to heal, you actually can start walking towards them slowly and attacking every few seconds by stopping, and you'll actually be able to hit them, and you should be able to get them stuck in a loop where they actually won't attack you either. But you have to be very careful with those dragons, because the amount of damage they will do to your main characters is extreme at points.
One of the more annoying things about this game definitely ends up being these types of enemies that just keep walking backwards away from you non-stop. With the dragons, we like it because it really helps us give an advantage against the enemy. However, against some of the weaker enemies, you just want to stand there and be able to hit them a few times just to get rid of them. Also, learning how to run by holding the right button as well as holding up at the same time is crucial in order to be able to get enough speed to get over certain jumps. Here I'm going to use another clerical spell, Protection from Evil. This will allow me to get by these flames a little bit easier without taking too much damage. As well as protect me from some of those arrows. Be sure to heal up if you need to, because we have another dragon on the left side of the screen. If you're lucky enough to actually be able to walk through it, then just bypass it and run to the nearest door that you need to go through. Here you're going to have to get a running jump so you actually can get over these pits. This is probably one of the hardest jumping rooms of the game. At the end, though, is another slide that takes us to the next part of the dungeon. Here is probably one of the hardest rooms in the game. You have two dragons in this room, and you're going to have to take them both out in order to bypass this room. Start off by taking out the one on the left. Doing the same strategy as before, trying to slowly walk towards them and delivering hits every time. When it gets to the wall, though, however, back away from them a little bit, and then try to get back in close to continue the pattern. Be sure to heal up if you get anywhere low on health. Because even though you may have a little bit of health left, and you may be able to get one or two more hits, the dragon can drain those hits in like two or three seconds, so you need to make sure that you have your healing spells ready. When you run to the other side of the room, it's time to do the same thing again with the other dragon. Trying to back him up towards the wall, in which case you may have to either back away from him to get him to walk again so that you can get back in and start hitting. But be very careful not to walk too far back to the left, because if you do that, the other dragon may respawn and then you have both dragons after you. For the most part, you'll be able to jump over these spiders and won't actually have to take them out or deal with them at all. Thankfully, this room we can just bypass that troll to the left because our exit that we need is to the right. In this room, we're going to take that red potion that's laying on the ground. Here, unfortunately, we're going to have to either take out the troll or do a running jump into him and get a couple of hits but be able to run through him in the end. It may be a little bit tricky at first to get down actually being able to run through certain enemies, but it will really save you a lot of time as well as health in the end. Use the red potion as it will actually slow down enemies. This will allow us to bypass the dragon by just running right through him as he won't be able to actually attack us.
This is the last hallway before the boss of the game, so be very careful getting past these last two trolls. Enter the boss's chamber, and now I'm gonna go switch over to Gold Moon. With Gold Moon, get close to the giant dragon known as Kithsound, and you're gonna actually throw your sword at Kithsound, which will instantly destroy him. With that done, we now have to run, so Gold Moon works well here because she can run pretty fast. Run over to the right and take the Disc of Misha Cup. With those in hand, more stuff's gonna be falling from the ceiling, so we have to quickly run back to the left. Once you make it back over to the left, though, that's the end of the game. At the end, it tells you your experience points that you did gain, which is actually just your score, by defeating a certain amount of enemies. You automatically get 2,000 experience for every character by just being able to complete the game with them still alive. At our congratulations screen, it tells you that the gods have actually rescued you from Zach Sorrel, as well as look forward to more adventures in Dragons of Flame. Unfortunately, Dragons of Flame was never released in North America, so most people would think the game didn't exist. It was released only in Japan. Dragons of Flame is a direct sequel to this one, so it's the very same gameplay that you got to know in this one. It was tweaked a little bit and can be a little bit better to play, but overall it's still pretty much the same experience. And with that, that's going to wrap up this edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoy.